Good afternoon, Doug Winter, Next Gen Aero Support, the VP of Operations. What we have is a Trend 800 rollover stand in the rolled position, which is how you should receive your stand on a truck. The rolled position eliminates a wide load during transportation. We're gonna show you how to get it back into the normal situation to plant an engine, land it in the proper way to do that. Okay, the first thing you must do to rotate the cradle is remove the turnbuckle on the right side of the cradle, which is mounted to the base of the engine stand. It's critical that you take both pins out and set the turnbuckle on the ground due to clearance issues. configuration at the casters and the isolators will be in when you receive your stand. At this time we're going to lower the isolators for safety reasons so we can swing the casters out of the way to roll the cradle. All right, at this time we have the power source for the motor plugged in. Please note you need a 20 amp breaker. At this time we're gonna go ahead and roll. The critical part on the handle here, which is kind of minor to some, but it, it does affect this breaker. That motor will start to engage if you only partially push the lever. You must fully engage it. Okay, once the indicator leaves the maximum roll position, the red light goes off. It will not come on again until the cradle is in the level load position. You will see the red light come on. On the lower left cradle roller, there's a red line, which is placed as a second option for the operator to stop the cradle while rotating. That is in case the light was malfunctioned. We're gonna prep the engine stand to install the engine. We're gonna remove the rear heads and after ring support segments. You may use a forklift or a crane to do this, or you may do each piece individually. We, we have chosen to use the forklift to lower it as one unit. At this time, the right rear head block, you have to separate the two pieces. There's an Allen, two Allen bolts. That's because the right rear engine mount has a collar on the outer edge, which prevents the engine from sliding while it's in rotation. Once this is separated, you can walk up to the engine, to your engine mount, that you've already installed on the aircraft engine and clamshell this back together. It makes it much easier to land the engine in the cradle. There's the two pieces, two bolts. Now you, you can set them back on the engine on the right rear. The left rear does not have to be taken apart. You can simply walk up to the engine and slide it onto the engine mount, which you've installed earlier. At this time, we're gonna remove the left and right front heads. This is how they come when they're in the truck position. There's four bolts on top that are inch and an eighth, socket required, and an inch and a half center bolt. We're gonna take them off and go install them on the engine flange with the flange adapters, which as you can see, are with the front engine mounts.
They're removing the right front engine head. You can see the flange adapter, which is part of the front head pin. You have to remove this and install it on the engine prior to pinning the front mounts to the fan case. At this time, we're gonna set the Trend 800 into the Trend 800 rollover stand by Next Gen Aero Support. We're gonna show you the key points to set this engine smoothly, which makes it easy for the mechanics to install. Front looks good. Okay, everything looks good on front so far, guys. Okay, at this time, the crew's mounting the aft support on the left and right side of the engine. These have to go on now in order for you to bolt the head blocks down. So what we're gonna do at this time is Set the clamshell for the front head, and it's key that you start the center bolt, which is requires an inch and a half socket. The gap between the clamshell on the top, which Randy's pointing out, must be perfectly level. By looking at it right now, it means the front of the engine needs to come down just a hair. So Shane, you wanna go ahead and, perfect. He just lowered a little bit. All these bolts should go in by hand, relatively easy. If they do not, then that means you are not level. You may have to do one head at a time. Okay, the key is to tighten the center bolt, which requires an inch and a half socket. That tells you that all four bolts are centered up on the head. Once that's tight, the mechanic will tighten the four remainder bolts, which require an inch and an eighth socket. These just need to be snug tight. Excessive tightening is not required. It's up to the mechanic if they want to use a battery-operated unit. That's fully acceptable. Go back in with a ratchet and make sure you can get them snugged up. Okay, at this time we're gonna lower the engine off the crane. So you're gonna see the load on the engine favor the front end by the fan case and you'll see it start to dive in a downward position. You'll hear noise, this is perfectly normal. This is how this stand is designed. At this time, the full load is off of the crane and we'll remove the spreader bar. We're using a half inch drill, which we find the most convenient way to move the center of gravity pick point on the transfer beam. There's marks on the transfer beam which tell you where to set this lifting point when the spreader bar is empty. If you do not set it at the CG, you may cause damage to the engine, spreader bar, or employees if lifting this improper. Please follow the manual when you're setting the lifting point. At this time, we'll film this so you can see the stop points. Okay, we've left the, the front mounts are completely off. The back 
attach points, we still have the bolts in. And the pin has been pulled. Okay, at this time, the barrel nuts must be removed prior to lifting the transfer beam. You need to ensure as you're lifting slowly that they don't roll off and catch any engine components. The key to lifting this off is that that transfer beam is level, which we've demonstrated, and we're gonna lift very slow. There you go. Okay, at this time we're gonna put in the truck stabilizer arms for transport. Very simple operation. Absolutely has to be on the stand prior to truck shipment. Your shock isolators would be in a down position, which is explained in the manual, that you would lift the stand four to six inches off the ground, drop the shock, shock mounts, pin them. That's the configuration to go on a truck for transport. These stabilizer arms are very easy to install with pins on the bottom and a pin on the top. Do not over torque. The top bolt is in the manual. By doing so, it will cause the engine to be pulled down in the front end, which you do not want to do. All you want these is snug by hand. Okay, they just put the pin in for the top and on the top of the cradle is a nut that you would just snug down with minimal torque. At this time, we are gonna roll the engine. We've removed the shackle, the turnbuckle on the right side of the stand and both turnbuckles that are mounted to the front fan case, which are in your manual. Everything is disconnected and ready to roll the engine. Okay, we'll go ahead and start the roll. So it's highly advisable to have a mechanic on the right side of the engine with a flashlight just checking clearances in case an item was not secured. You can yell stops for the operator to stop the rotation so you can address the issue. If everything is done properly, you should have no problems whatsoever, but we advise that uh, clearance checks are done continuously until the completion of the roll. Okay, at this time the red light should come on first or the red tab will touch the base. You must absolutely stop rotation. Okay, two systems here in place, guys. Red light should come on. Don't always count on the light 100%. Added feature would be this red tab. You have to stop rotation when this red tab touches the surface of the base. If you go further than that, you will damage the jack screws. The engine is in the fully rolled position. In order to go on the aircraft, you must secure this engine by attaching the two turnbuckles on the front, which attach to the front ring. I'm gonna demonstrate that this time. The left and right are exactly the same, and you also need to attach the turnbuckle at the right rear base to the cradle at the same time.
put the safety latch on. There's also a jam nut on here. You just want to hand snug this, run the jam nut down until it's snug. That'll prevent any rotation of the turnbuckle. For removal, you simply pull the safety latch, loosen this by hand, pull the pin, reinstall it so you don't lose your parts, fold it forward and let it rest on the caster. Do the same on the right side of the engine.